This video is about Lewis dot structures. Now remember, the first thing you want to do with Lewis dot structures is to count up the valence electrons. So if you have something like H2S, then you say, hmm, let me look at a periodic table. Hydrogen's right here. It has one valence electron. Sulfur is over here. It has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. So hydrogen has one, but there's two of them. That's two. Sulfur has six. And there's one of them. Six. That's eight. So here's sulfur in the middle. Hydrogens are around it. It does not matter which of the four sides of the sulfur you have the hydrogens on. It doesn't matter at all. Let's put in my eight Lewis dots. My eight electrons. Oh, look. Sulfur's got eight. Each of these hydrogens have two. It's happy. Okay. That's good. That's what we want. Now, what if we have something just a little harder? What if we have CO2? Carbon, according to my periodic table, there's carbon. One, two, three, four. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen's here above sulfur, so it has six valence electrons. So there's carbon, it's got four. Oxygen has six. There's two of them. That's 12. 12 plus four is 16. Now my first instinct is to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20. That's too many. If I give everybody eight and make everybody happy, it takes 20 electrons. I don't have 20 to play with. I have only 16 to play with. The only way to solve this dilemma is if more than two pair are being shared. So, let me erase this. Try it again. If I do this, that carbon, now carbon has eight, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This oxygen has eight, this oxygen has eight. Four electrons are being shared instead of two electrons are being shared. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's called a double bond because four electrons are being shared. As opposed to this guy back here. Where only two electrons are being shared, that's a single bond. And yes, there is such a thing as a triple bond also where three pairs of electrons are being shared. Six electrons are being shared, that's a triple bond. That happens also. Nothing else. There is no such thing as a quadruple bond or anything of the sort. Just single, double, triple. Now. Caveat, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus. Those are the only ones that are going to make double or triple bonds. That's it. And those guys only with each other. Okay? You can't say like, C is triple bonding chlorine. And I say, but that wasn't, chlorine isn't one of these. And you say, but carbon is. No, no, only amongst each other.
right? Halogens, remember those halogens? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine? Never make double or triple bonds. Only single bonds. Never. Do not, never, never make double or triple bonds to halogens. Never. Doesn't happen. Okay. Now the next thing I need to tell you about, something called resonance structures. Resonance structures. Resonance structures are ways of showing bonding in an in a molecule where one structure just doesn't cut it. Because Lewis dots is in fundamentally a very simple bonding program. Not that it's easy, it's that bonding is so complicated. So resonance structures are all about ways of showing something more complicated with this rather easy theory. So for example, SO3. We've already said sulfur has six valence electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons, and there's three of them. That's 18, 18 plus six, it's 24. Okay, here's my sulfur, three oxygens. Once again, it doesn't matter which three sides you've got. It's fine. Now let me try to put 24 around, it makes everybody happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Well, there's twenty-four, but the sulfur isn't happy. There's only six around the sulfur. I need a double bond. That is your cue when you need a double bond or a triple bond, that you don't have enough electrons to give everybody a single bond. That's when the double bonds come in. But remember, not just any elements, just carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and phosphorus. Okay, so we're gonna make a double bond. So I'm going to erase this pair, kind of randomly, and I'm going to put it here. Now look, this sulfur, 8. This oxygen, 8. This oxygen, 8. This oxygen, 8. Everybody's got 8, and everybody is happy. Where the resonance structure comes in, is because there's nothing special about this oxygen, this oxygen that has the double bond to it. It could just as easily be the double bond to the top oxygen or the double bond to the oxygen that's over here on the left. There's nothing that makes it special, this right-hand oxygen, that makes that the guy with the double bond, which means I have to write three structures. I have to write, and the way you do it is a double arrow in between them, I also have to write a structure where the double bond is up here. And I have to write a structure where the double bond is over here. Now you'll notice, resonance structures are a very specialized thing. They show up when there's some kind of symmetry in the molecule. When there's a double bond somewhere that could also be somewhere else. But you'll also notice that to make resonance structures, I have not moved atoms. I didn't make any kind of resonance structure where the O is on the bottom here, okay? Don't move atoms in a resonance structure. Only electrons, okay? Only electrons. 
And you are only there when there's some kind of symmetry in the molecule. It's all you need to know.